This walkthrough is intended to inform you of the procedures at the poll and to make smoother the process on election day. You are allowed to vote once and for one candidate only. Use the indelible pencil provided to mark your ballot paper. No other mark should be made on the ballot. Fold the ballot paper to conceal your vote but to show the presiding officer's signature. Show the folded ballot paper to the presiding officer so that he sees the signature on the ballot before you place the ballot into the box. Leave all electronic devices, that is cell phones, iPads, etc. on the presiding officer's desk as they are not allowed into the booth. This is each candidate will be allowed a maximum of three agents in the station at any one time and three on the outside. In the presence of his staff and the designated agents, the presiding officer will open the ballot box, remove all the contents and check to ensure for accuracy. He shows the box empty to those present. All ballot papers found in the ballot box will be counted and the numbers recorded on Form M. If there are advanced poll ballots to be placed in that box, these will be put into the box and it will be locked and sealed. The box will be positioned in front of the presiding officer and in view of all. Agents will then be invited to check the voting booth compartments. At exactly 8 a.m., the poll opens and the first voter is invited in. He must present either a voter's card or other official means of identification, that is, a passport, work ID with current photo, or a driver's license. The floor clerk will call out the name of the voter. The register clerk will check the register to confirm that he is on the register for that polling division. The counterfoil clerk finds the corresponding counterfoil in the tin, removes it and checks it against the voter's card to ensure its authenticity and passes them on to the presiding officer. Once the presiding officer is satisfied that the person is entitled to vote in that polling division, he then checks the voter's right thumb to ensure that no election ink is on it. Barring no defects, he then immerses the thumb up to its first joint in the well of indelible ink. The voter is given a hand towel to wrap around the ink finger so that he does not smudge the ballot. He then proceeds to give the voter a ballot and some instructions. Before issuing the ballot, the presiding officer writes the number of the voter's card onto the counterfoil of the ballot paper taking care to ensure that no one sees the ballot paper serial number. He affixes his signature in the corner of the ballot. He then instructs the voter to go into one of the compartments and using the indelible pencil provided, place an X in the space opposite the name, party, and symbol of his choice. To fold the ballot paper so as to conceal his vote, come out of the booth and show the presiding officer's signature on the ballot paper before dropping the ballot into the box. The voter should then collect his voter's card and leave the polling place. Once the presiding officer issues a ballot to the voter, the counterfoil clerk ticks the counterfoil of the voter's card. 
the register clerk places a tick next to the name of the voter in the register and the stamp clerk uses the date stamp to stamp the date in the appropriate place on the inside of the voter's card. These all indicate that the voter has voted. In the case of someone who presents and advises that due to an incapacitation, he is unable to cast his ballot without the assistance of a friend, the friend is allowed to accompany the voter into the booth so as to mark his X. However, both the incapacitated voter and the friend must take separate oaths before being issued the ballot. The voter takes and subscribes to form O and the friend to form P, in which he swears to keep secret the name of the candidate for whom the voter's X is marked. He also swears that he has not already acted as a friend. The incapacitated voter is then inked. The assistant presiding officer keeps a listing of all incapacitated voters. Once an agent challenges the right of a voter to vote in that polling division, either because the voter has never lived in the constituency or that he has moved out in excess of 12 months, the voter must take and subscribe an oath in the form N. Once the voter takes the oath, he will then be given a regular ballot. Should he refuse, then he will not be allowed to vote. A voter who presents to vote and has a voter's card for that particular polling division, but his name does not appear on the polling division register, and he insists on his right to vote at that polling division, is allowed to vote on a colored ballot. At 6 p.m., if there are no voters online to vote, the presiding officer will close the poll. If there are voters on the line to vote, the presiding officer will establish the end of the line and instruct the police officer not to allow any other person to join the line. All voters on the line at 6 p.m. will be allowed to vote. After the last person has voted, the presiding officer will close the polling station and begin the count of the ballots. After the count is completed, the presiding officer will complete Form Q, which is the post poll ballot paper. He then places all ballots, used, unused, counted, rejected, and spoiled will be placed in their marked envelopes and along with the marked copy of the register on all oaths and required lists placed into the ballot box. The presiding officer then seals and signs the ballot box in the presence of all. Along with the police officer, he then transports the ballot box to the returning officer. So let us recap. This walkthrough is intended to inform you of the procedures at the poll and to make smoother the process on election day. You are allowed to vote once and for one candidate only. Use the indelible pencil provided to mark your ballot paper. No other mark should be made on the ballot. Fold the ballot paper to conceal your vote but to show the presiding officer's signature. Show the folded ballot paper to the presiding officer so that he sees the signature on the ballot before you place the ballot into the box. Leave all electronic devices, that is cell phones, iPads, etc. on the presiding officer's desk as they are not allowed into the booth. This message has been brought to you courtesy of the Parliamentary Registration Department in